the New Leaf Podcast, which is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and my journey as a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. My name is Garmin, and you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl, and I'll list the other things right here. Um, I'm trying to <laughs> podcast a little bit earlier in the day, uh, even though it's already very dark. It's like 3.30 p.m., but I've managed to turn on my overhead light without it casting really dark shadows and I'm gonna show you how I do that because this is a little photography trick. <laughs> so you have this tissue paper and I have just pinned it to the lamp, to the lampshade because otherwise, sorry, otherwise it would be way too too much contrast and now it's nice and soft and I'm not sure about the color but we'll uh, we'll see about that um, so hi how have you been thank you all so much for your lovely comments and likes and subscribes on my last video thank you all so so much this week I want to start off by by telling you that I have a hand eye yarn sale going on at the moment on my Instagram account and I created a separate Instagram account for this it's called new leaf designs yarn I'll put it on the screen and uh, so basically you can shop via my Instagram page by commenting with sold and then I'll uh, send you a PayPal link or a tiki if you're <laughs> in the Netherlands and I still have some lovely yarns left although I'm not sure how many will be left um, or if any at all will be left when this podcast goes live so if you want to get your hands on some last ever skeins of New Leaf Designs yarn then get your ass over there <laughs> Um, so I have some lovely skeins left, um, I have pastel colors, I'm just looking at my yarn stock over there, I have uh, some grays, and uh, I have some yellow, and I'm just trying to, this is not the best podcast setup to show you a color, but uh, yeah, this is a kind of um, mustardy green, uh, mustardy yellow. <laughs> And uh, I used almost exactly this color for my ember sweater right here. This is a, um, the ember sweater is a design by Yuko Shimizu and you can find it on Ravelry. And I used my hand dyed yarn to knit that sweater. And if you want to get your hands on the yellow, you can still get it at this point in time. I have some lovely avocado dyed skeins and they are a beautiful like blush brown if you know what I mean so a kind of pink brown and these are lovely I'm tempted to keep these so um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'll, I'll be keeping all of the yarns that don't sell but um, yeah <laughs> hurry your ass over there if you want to get some yarns uh, and I have some coral skeins too and I have lots of different yarn bases uh, my favorite is this one this is 80-20 wool rami so 80% wool 20% rami rami is a plant uh, plant-based fiber and it's also called nature's nylon because it is so strong and I also have a natural sock yarn base with this. I don't have it here, but um, that's 60% wool, 20% silk, and 20% rami. So it's super strong. And um, due to the plant-based content, there it feels a little bit cottony, so it, um, it would be perfect for summer socks. Um, yes, but um, again, you can shop at New Leaf Designs Yarn. Uh, on my uh, at the Instagram account and um, they were there were some skeins that I kept out of the sale because um, this these particular ones they changed color so I had them lying in the um, on the shelves like this and where um, the sunlight touched them it's lighter you see that it's lighter here than here 
so I'm keeping these. Um, the ones that I'm selling don't have any uh, color fading, but um, these are all naturally dyed, so please do keep them out of direct sunlight. I have stored them in a shelf where actually the sun doesn't shine directly on, but um, still these faded. Um, yeah, so please just make sure to store them out of direct sunlight, like in, in a closed cabinet or something, and also with the finished item. Um, and with natural yarns, uh, I mean natural dyed yarns, they might still bleed a little bit um, when you wash them. Of course, that's with all indie dyed yarns. Um, and if you put them on uh, the Swift to uh, wind a ball, uh, you might still find dye stuff like uh, falling down onto your table. Um, I just wound this ball. Uh, that I showed you in the clips before the podcast started. And uh, this is from Gold DK, who also um, naturally dye their yarns. And this one is dyed with Matter uh, and Walnut, I think. I'm not quite sure. Um, and on the table, there were little, little um, dust particles of Matter root, um, which, you know, because it's so difficult to wash all of that out. Um, so please do expect stuff like that. It's normal. <laughs> um, but of course I understand if you're not into that at all, you just want your yarn to be squeaky, squeaky clean, then of course this is not for you. But anyway, if you would like some of my hand dyed yarns, my last ever stock, then please head over to my Instagram page. Um, I got some messages uh, of people asking me why I wouldn't dye any more yarn. It's simply because I want to focus my attention elsewhere. So, or not elsewhere, but rather on the things that I'm already doing, such as designing and recording tutorial videos. Um, dyeing yarn was so much fun, but it also took up a lot of my time. And um, yeah, it was just too big of a distraction. So yeah. I had to let it go <laughs> but it was really really uh, a lot of fun and I might still do it for myself and then record some uh, dyeing videos but um, I won't be selling them anymore so this is your last chance so um, you know what to do <laughs> um, and I am wearing my vlogmas cowl I'll take it off it has uh, grown quite a bit since uh, I made it, uh, so it's it's just very very um, flowy now, very supple. Can you guys say that? I made it with Walnut Fever yarns, her Merino Pebble base, and her Surrey Alpaca or Surrey Silk. I'm not sure. It's kind of like a mohair, but softer and thicker. And I held two of them, or one strand of each, together. And it's just a really, really beautiful fabric. The Merino Pebbles colorway, or the, the base, is um, like a fingering weight, but then you get a little floofy bit, <laughs> like a, a fluffier bit, um, every once in a while, uh, which may be difficult to knit with. Uh, knit with. But if you combine it with a Surrey alpaca or uh, a mohair, um, these kind of yarns, they have a halo and they tend to fill up gaps. So they are perfect to combine. And the Vlogmas cowl, so Vlogmas, uh, are a series of vlogs leading up to Christmas hence Vlogmas, and a lot of YouTubers um, participate in that. So Vlogmas starts on December 1st up to December 24th or, you know, some dude until the end of the month. Just kind of record snippets of your everyday life. And last Vlogmas, so of 2019, I was designing and knitting this cowl. So it became the Vlogmas cowl. It's available in my Ravelry store, the pattern I mean, and also in my own webshop, newleafdesigns.nl. 
and this year during vlogmas I'm planning to knit a second version of this and since my gift knit list is not coming to an end but I can see the end like at the end of the tunnel <laughs> the light at the end of the tunnel. So I thought I'd show you the yarns again that I will be using. So I think I showed you these um, in a previous uh, episode. They are from the Mimo Yarn Co. Um, and they are beautifully hand-dyed by Molly, uh, who lives in the UK. And um, this is the same base that I also used for this. So uh, she calls it her uh, slub base. And most hand dyers call it slub base or something like that. Uh, junk yarn uh, calls it her silly string or something. But they're basically all the same yarn base. Do you understand now what I mean by floofy bits? <laughs> Uh, so I got the, this one. Uh, she still has quite a few in her web shop, uh, although I'm not sure if she has any in this color. This is called Autumnal, but she has gorgeous colors. Um, and I'm going to pair it with this mohair also by the Mimo Yarn Co. And you can find her on Instagram as the Mimo Yarn Co with underscores in between um, the words. And yeah, oh, this colorway is called Autumn Walks. So I'm very um, curious to see how that will knit up together. Yes, but that's future knitting. Now let's get into what I have been making. So I have two finished objects. Yes, <laughs> uh, my rainbow socks are done. Here they are, such happy socks. They are not matching, although they are kind of perfectly mismatching, if you get what I mean. So uh, there are six uh, stripes in this colorway, and this one is starting at the first stripe. And this one is starting at the fourth stripe, so they are exactly um, three stripes apart. Um, and that is quite, quite satisfying. Um, the only thing, like, I'm not sure why. So I guess maybe my tension changed. But uh, on the second sock, I had to cut out a color here to make sure that... Um, so I, um, the last stripe before the heel is orange, which might be a little bit blown out here by this light. So the last stripe before the heel is orange, and here the last stripe um, after the heel is also orange. Um, and on my first sock it was blue um, before and after the heel. Um, but on my second sock, I had to cut out the um, pink color because otherwise I would have pink, orange, pink, orange, and then the continuation of the stripe. And I didn't want that, so I thought, okay, I'll cut out that color. Um, yeah, so here they are. Uh, the yarn I'm using, or I have used, is West Yorkshire Spinners in their DK sock base. Um, yeah, and then the rainbow color. Um, and these actually turned out a, um, a bit too big for my own feet. Uh, so that if I would put them on, uh, the heel, like I would have this bit, um, just left over, just too much room. So I'm going to gift these to one of my sisters-in-law. I've already uh, asked her to uh, try them on. And uh, they fit her perfectly, so I thought, okay, these are going to be for you. And if you're curious, that is the sister with um, that I'm knitting the pink headband for. So 
if you want to link them in your mind. <laughs> uh, we were, um, we actually uh, went for a weekend trip last weekend. Uh, well, not, not really a trip, but uh, we booked an Airbnb and uh, we just stayed there over the weekend with one other friend. Um, and we didn't really go anywhere. We just <laughs> wanted to get out of the house. Uh, all restaurants are closed, so uh, we brought our own food to cook there, and um, it was a lovely farmhouse. Oh, they had kittens. Um, we of course we didn't touch them, and they wouldn't let us near them. But um, yeah, it was just really really nice. And so I asked her to uh, to um, try on the first sock, and then. We did visit the um, the city or the town, I guess it is a city, and there was a yarn store there, so I thought, okay, I have to go and say hi. And it was the uh, Wool Cafe in Schoen. And it's owned by Le Leonie, uh, she's, she's just super lovely. I've been there a couple times, uh, but not as much as I want to because it's just a little bit far. <laughs> It's about a two-hour drive from where I live. And while we were there, I got some Tweety sock yarn. It's a uh, dark blue, like really, really navy blue with um, colored speckles, um, like colored Tweety bits. And uh, it's a sock yarn, or I'm going to use it for socks, even though it has 30% polyamide. And then, so it's, it's basically 40% synthetic. So it's 60% wool, 30% polyamide, 7% acrylic, and 3% viscose. Or is viscose not synthetic? Is it, I think viscose is recycled plant-based fiber. But anyway, so they feel a little bit acrylic-y. <laughs> But um, I think that will also make them more hard wearing. And I love Tweety yarn, so I'm gonna use this one for socks. And then my sister in law, um, she saw some glitter yarn and she fell in love. And she said, "Oh my God, do you think I can make glitter socks?" Um, and I was, <laughs> I was like, "Someone wants me to teach her how to knit." <laughs> so of course heart eyes, you know. I, I love teaching people how to knit and especially if I know them, like, ugh, it just lights me up. But the glitter yarn that they had wasn't suitable for socks, so I thought, okay, I have another ball of this uh, DK sock yarn in a different color. So I thought, okay, just pick your knitting needle and, um, and uh, I'll teach you how to knit. And yeah, <laughs> she already finished the toe of her sock. So I'm super excited about that. Um, yeah, so I'll keep you guys updated on her progress. <laughs> and then my second finished object is a hat. So this is my fourth home hat. Um, if you'll count my Star Wars hat as a home hat because it uses um, the, uh, the same numbers. Um, so I did the orange, orange and blue hat, the purple and green one, then the Star Wars hat, and then um, this is the fourth home hat. So uh, the home hat is um, my most recent pattern. It is available for free on my website, newleafdesigns.nl, or you can purchase the PDF in my web shop or, or on Ravelry. Just if, you've, if you'd like an easy printable or if you'd just like to support me. So I used the same, um, I used the adult medium size and this chart comes from the pattern. Uh, this is a slight modification of some other charts that I have um, included in my Around the World sweater pattern. Um, so I just had a little bit of fun with um, colors and charts. This is the same chart as this. It looks totally different though. And um, I think I might have decreased 
uh, too quickly. So I think <laughs> I think I omitted the last decrease round, which is why it looks so funny. And also this is a thicker yarn and I didn't go down a needle size. So I guess there are three factors to wear to why it looks a bit funny. But um, uh, I still need to block it so it might block out a little bit. And so I just popped it on a balloon um, just to show you the patterns better. So yeah, this will be for my father-in-law and I think he will love the colors. So um, I used, um, I have this little bit left of the main color that I used, which is uh, Onion DK yarn. Um, it's not DK weight though, the DK stands for Denmark. I think it's sport weight. Um, yeah, but it was just brilliant for um, the brim because it's just a little bit plumper, so it's nice and snug. Um, I used this light gray, which is a, a leftover regia, I think. Um, I used some dark olive green, which is Scapius Metropolis, uh, number 26, the Dipak colorway, my favorite, my all-time favorite. Um, I use Scapius Metropolis uh, 62 Valencia, that's the uh, rusty brown here. And I used light blue throughout, um, which is Scapius Metropolis in number five, Medan. Those are all the colors that I used. So yes, another happy hat, or a home hat, but yeah. So let's draw my progress on the board right there. Um, and this is the, oops, what did I do? No, there. <laughs> okay, that is the colorwork hat, number six. So that is done. And now, for the beret. I have chosen a pattern and I have caked up the yarn. So I'm going to show you and then I promise I'll talk about what is underneath here. Ta-da! <laughs> okay, so I have caked up the yarn. I am using Gould's DK. So again, DK for Denmark. Gould and the Ould, or uh, I'm not sure, I'm just pretending I know how to pronounce this. The Ould uh, stands for wool, and then the G um, uh, together, Gould means gold. So that's a little um, word pun for you. Um, and this, what base is this? Uh, this is the Scottish Lamb's Wool base, 100% Scottish Lamb's Wool. It's 100 grams, uh, 650 meters, so it's a lace weight. I have also used this yarn, but then a green colorway for my Scent of the Pines shawl. And oh, it's just... Mm. It's just good, very good yarn. Um, it's two ply, and it's just it's just beautiful. It's a coppery color, and this is dyed with walnut and madder root. And the pattern that I'm um, using uh, calls for two lace weight held together. So I'm holding this lace weight together with this mohair which is by Santa's Craftfulness. She's not dyeing any more yarn at the moment, but um, her yarn is amazing. <laughs> uh, and I wound it into two cakes because I might use two strands of mohair. Um, because I think it might be too thin if I just use one strand of each. So the pattern that I'm using is Bis Bis, uh, 
again pretending I know how to pronounce it, Beast Beast by Sari Nordland. I'll put a picture up right here. Uh, it's a lovely beret. Um, it kind of, it looks felted because um, the original sample also uses um, mohair and you start at the little <laughs> the little tail of the beret, if you know what I mean, uh, and then you um, increase towards the edges. Um, but the increases, um, I think there are knit from back increases, um, I think they are a bit visible uh, when I look at the samples. So that's also why I'm contemplating using two strands of mohair because that will give it more of a haze so that hopefully it kind of obscures the increases a little bit more. So I'm just, I'm just, uh, yeah, I don't know what to try first. If I just want to go ahead with two strands of mohair or that I'll just try and follow the pattern first, but, um, so the pattern has two options. It has a fingering weight option, which is two lace weights held together. And there is a sport weight option, which I don't know what the composition is. It's also a mohair with something. Um, and the finished size of the fingering weight version is 53 centimeters which, you know, I know that hats are supposed to have negative ease, but uh, for a 58, 60 centimeter head circumference of the recipient, mm, I'm not quite sure. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure. Um, so I might just use a second strand of mohair so I can make it a little bit bigger, especially because I expect to be working with a smaller needle size than the pattern says. Um, I'm a very loose knitter, so I often have to go down a needle size, but yeah, in this case, I don't know. <laughs> so that's uh, still a little bit of a dilemma, but uh, at least I picked up the yarn and I picked up the pattern, so that's something. <laughs> Um, so sadly, I can't mark anything yet on my board because I haven't started it, but I am making more progress. I mean, I, I still think of it as progress. So, um, so I think the beret will be done next week and then I will have one color work hat to go and a bow tie, a bow tie or two. And then a question mark for my mother-in-law who didn't want a hat. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's the beret. Um, if you remember my embroidery project from last week, I haven't worked on it at all this week, so I'm not going to show you. Um, yeah, just had too much going on. But... I do have something else to show you. So um, I have a new shawl design, a crochet shawl design, and it has just been published in issue 130 of Inside Crochet. Let me show you. Here it is. This is the Metamorphosis shawl. And, okay, this is so much fun. So, um, <laughs> I haven't received my copy of the magazine yet, so I am not able to show you my, um, my master class in it because um, for the for this issue and the past two, I've had a masterclass column and it was about combining yarns. So in the first one, um, we combined a solid and a sheer yarn. In the second one, um, which is um, 
with my Yeti pattern. My Yeti is right there. <laughs> uh, but you were able to see it in the back a few episodes ago. Um, and so in the second column with my Yeti, I combined a fluffy yarn and a smooth yarn. And in this column, so in my third and last part of the masterclass, uh, we are talking about embellishing. Not necessarily with two different yarns, but I am talking about um, how to choose your yarns if you want to embe embellish a project. For example, if you have a mohair base, you probably won't want to be embroidering stuff on that because in mohair you can't hide your ends. But there's lots more um, in the masterclass, including this pattern. And so um, you can take any uh, shawl that you have crocheted. Um, but in this pattern, um, the, the shawl, the base shawl is also included. So uh, it's a triangle shawl. And I should explain first you crochet the base shawl and then you add these embellishments so these bobbles are not made while you make the shawl yes <laughs> I'll show you um, so I did three types of embellishment I did the bobbles I did the slip stitching which you can also see here and tassels both on the surface of the shawl and on the points or the corners and so the base is made from Scapius um, linen soft Scapius linen soft uh, this is their hyacinth um, colorway and then at the bottom I used the uh, uh, Cherise colorway, so cherry, but then pronounced in French. Um, and for embellishing, I used Metropolis because I love this yarn. <laughs> and uh, the idea is uh, if you had the uh, Scapius Metropolis mini pack or perhaps the Scapius Katona mini pack, uh, you have lots of colors in there, a lot, tiny balls of lots of colors, and you can use those to embellish. And so I'm not going to show you how to do all of the embellishments because that's in the master class. Um, but I am going to show you the baubles because, okay, I thought this was quite revolutionary. <laughs> I mean, I was, I was quite proud of this idea. So I basically... Um, crocheted a long chain with baubles so like I don't, I don't remember how many chains in between like 10 or something uh, so 10 and then crochet a bobble 10 chains crochet a bobble and the chains around the back and I've sewed the baubles into place but um, you can basically pop them out See, so I've um, poked them through the stitches. Ta-da! And there you have your bobbles. Um, yeah. <laughs> and the fabric is just uh, double crochets or trebles if you use UK terms. And you just push them in between two stitches. You don't have to... Um, you don't have to prepare the fabric, just double trebles, uh, just uh, trebles or double crochets and you can just push the bobbles through. And yeah, <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. So uh, you can get this pattern in Inside Crochet issue 130. Um, and in a couple months I will get the copyright back so I will be... Um, publishing the pattern by myself as well. So again, this is the metamorphosis shawl because it kind of undergoes a morphose, metamorphose? I don't know. 
<laughs> I don't know what the uh, English term is like it uh, a transformation um, because at first it's just a plain um, triangle shawl and then you add all of these embellishments oh and um, a little extra tip for tassels if um, if you've sewn on your tassel and they are a little bit wonky or maybe you've washed your project and you know tassels don't look pretty after washing I can tell you that much so um, if you have a wonky tassel then just uh, put a kettle on like an electric kettle steaming water and hold your project up in the steam and then be careful with your hands uh, you can take it out and then smooth it um, and then it just it works like how do you say that it works like a dream I don't know but it, it really works <laughs> so um, that's my tip for tassels let me just show you how to wear this thing I'll stand up so here's the entire shawl and you can either drape it across your shoulders like this um, I, I'm not wearing very matchy clothing for this but and this is my favorite way to wear this and you can kind of turn it out so that yeah so that the bobbles show and then you have the bobbles the tassels and the slip stitching isn't that nice and it goes without saying but you can use whatever color you like um, and I'm also very curious to see if people would um, um, would use these embellishments on shawls they have already finished because that would be so much fun and I think you could also do it on knit shawls it doesn't have to be crochet per se but um yeah all right that was it for me for this week uh, I do hope you enjoyed this episode again thank you so much for all of the likes subscribes and comments I do love to see them so thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time Bye-bye.